Pull-pull cable systems have been used on model airplanes pretty much since there's been model airplanes because it's a very light system, it's very simple, and it's very strong. The components of a pull-pull system are pretty standard. These are the pieces that came with my QQ Yak, and for one, you get a nice coated wire. Threaded end pieces are brass, and notice the double barrel crimp pieces that we get with this. I really like this idea because it makes setting up the pull-pull system a lot easier. And once these are crimped, it's hard to imagine a cable finding a way to move at all. And this is the rudder servo arm that also came from Flex Innovations. Again, it's very nicely made. Usually the first thing I do is fold the cable in half and then hold it up to the plane to make sure that those two pieces are long enough. But with the QQ Yak, the pieces came already cut and they're both plenty long for the job. This is a good time to install the rudder servo. We need to have it in place along with the servo arm for the rudder. I've already bound the radio so the rudder servo will stay centered while I'm adjusting the lengths of the cables. Before I start making the cables up, I tape the rudder on both sides to make sure that it stays absolutely centered. Standing the fuselage on its nose makes getting the cable down through the tail section a lot easier. I'll shove most of the cable into the fuselage but leave enough on the outside so I can tape it to the side of the fuselage so it doesn't slip in. Usually you can reach the cable to pull it through, or you might need to use a long needle nose pliers to get it started. The main thing is to be sure that this doesn't get above or below a structure that's going to hold it out of line on its way to the servo. And we need to pay attention to which cable we have because they cross in the tail section. And I tape this into the cables down on the right sides of the servo so they don't move around while I'm working on the other one. When I put the ball links on the threaded ends, I make sure that they have plenty of adjustment left inside for when we want to tighten the cables up later on. I went ahead and finished the ends that go at the rudder servo because I'm going to do all the adjustments to the cable length on the outside at the rudder. With the radio system on so the rudder servo stays centered, I can go ahead and set the cable lengths at the back end. It's just easier to do this work on the outside. When I'm certain of the cable lengths, I use my big channel locks pliers to crimp the pieces. This pliers has coarsely serrated jaws that do a good job of crimping the cable in place. A good squeeze from two directions and that cable is not going anywhere. Then I can cut off the excess cable. The cables are still a little bit loose, so I want to disconnect one end and we can put a couple of turns on the ball links on both ends of the cable. I make the same adjustment on both ends of the cables rather than just use up all the adjustment on one end. While the cable is disconnected at the rudder servo, I can come back here and put a couple of turns of correction on here without worrying about wrapping the cable up. With the cables reattached at the servo, I can check for the tension. We're not looking for these cables to be tight, we just don't want them to sag. It's easy to get the cables too tight to the point you can actually crush hinges, so when in doubt leave them a little bit looser. Once you do it a time or two, this goes very quickly.